please find your seat so we can begin this morning's special call meeting. All right, welcome. I would like to call Representative Mike Glanton to give us our invocation. It will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. Mr. Chairman, commissions, I uh, would first like to ask if we would give a moment of silence for the Charleston Nine. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we just come before you on this day and this hour that only you could have granted us. Just thanking you for being the great I am. Father, we ask your special blessings over this county this morning. We ask a special blessing over our leaders here this morning as they seek to make decisions for the betterment of this county. Father, we thank you for each and every person within the sound of my voice, and we pray blessings upon their households. We thank you this morning that we're able to gather to deliberate and to talk about those things that are important to us in our community. And Father, we just thank you once again for our leadership. We pray these and all things in the mighty and unmatched name of Jesus the Christ and those in agreement said. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. This is the June 29th, 2015 special call meeting. May we have a motion to adopt the agenda? I'll make the motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. We will now have public comment. Mr. Chairman, we do have citizens that have signed up. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residence for the record. Please, please speak clearly into the microphone. Speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make disparaging remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. Pam Ferguson, Judge Pam Ferguson. I'm Pam Ferguson, the probate judge. I'm also a citizen of Clayton County and have been for um, 40 plus years. Um, I just want to uh, y'all to consider the budget cuts that are being requested. Um, the commission has continued to ask um, departments to cut budgets um, and demand good customer service and demand that we do more with less. Y'all continue to do that. We ask for what we need. We continue to ask for what we need year after year. Um, you continue to demand cuts. Um, our Clayton County has always had a strong judiciary and you come to the point where we cannot provide the services. I'm required by law and I have sworn that I will uphold law and serve justice. But you've come to the point where we're continually asked to do more with less and we can't keep doing it. We can't keep operating on this. And what you've asked to do is you put it on the burdens of the employees that have served you, that have served this county, and you continue to ask for your employees to do more and do more and get less and get less, and we're cutting, we're using both sides of the paper, we're cutting stickies, we're cutting everywhere we can, and we can't continue to do more with less. So um, I respectfully ask that you not continue to cut these budgets year after year. Thank you. Kimberly Kirby. Hello, I'm Kimberly Kirby, homeowner here in Clayton County. Um, I'm just looking forward to some money in the budget to take care of our animals out there. You know, they're probably killing about 60 animals as we speak right now. Um, I'd also like to speak up for Chief Porter. He's been very responsive to me, and I think that um, he's, a, he's a good addition at the county. Lately, I have noticed that uh, our rapport is getting better. Things are getting done. And uh, I realize it's going to take time, but we do need money to back that up. Thank you for your time. 
Latanya Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Miss Jackson. I'm sorry to interrupt you. If you could please state your county of residence, too, please, for the record. County of residence. Oh, Conley. Okay, Latanya. Oh, I'm I'm here, Latanya Jackson, because there is a serious crime about to be committed um, by this board, and that is the um, removal of our chief of police, Greg Porter. No way will we let this happen. And by we, I mean the NAACP and the citizens of Clayton County. Jeff Turner, we put you here. You want to stay? We, we keep Jeff Porter. And if you would please address the board as a whole. This, this, is un, this is unmerited and not wanted. Crime in Clayton County is at an all time low. We do not wake up every morning with our county on the news. Greg Porter has provided this county with safety. Hell no, Greg Porter won't go. Hell no, Greg Porter won't go. I am safer in my community and everybody else can agree. If you actually live in this county, you will know we need Chief Greg Porter. Hell no, Greg Porter won't go. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Hong. Tom Hong. I apologize if I had the last name wrong. And when you come forward, if you would, please restate your name and your county of residence for the record, please. Tom Wynn, Clayton County. I'll get to the point. So from what I gathered is, Mr. Chief Porter here is being threatened to be fired by Mr. Jeff Turner here because he will not investigate Ms. Cinnamon Baldwin, president of the NAACP. The question is, why do you want to investigate Ms. Cinnamon Baldwin, the president of the NAACP, a grassroots organization comprised of volunteers who jo whose job is to rally people, point out issues in the community to be improved on, wrongs to be corrected and stand to be uphold and cooperate with you. The way I see it, a man in your position, this is very counterproductive. Let me ask you a question, sir. Who is investigating Ms. Baldwin? Basically, you gave an order to Greg Porter and he refused. I get, okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. Okay. Uh, Carolyn Mazik. Once again, please restate your name and county of residence. Thank you. My name is Carolyn Mazik, and I am a resident of Clayton County. Chief Porter has served the community with dignity and integrity. He has held his, office account, his officers accountable for the wrong that they may do. He is very transparent to the community. He is bold in what he stands for and careful for what he falls for. I stand with Chief Porter because he has a heart to stand behind serving the community and the oath that he took in serving justice with courage and boldness. He is a good police chief. He is responsive. He is accountable and he is approachable. We need people of this caliber and courage in office that we can trust, depend on, and know that he has the community best interests at hand. I stand behind Chief Porter. Thank you. <laughs> Cinnamon Baldwin. Good morning. Cinnamon Baldwin, Clayton County resident. I really don't even want to be here. But that's part of the job as president of the NAACP. As um, those who went before me stated, 
We're here to look into issues with, that are brought to us and make sure that people are being treated fairly, citizens in particular. But let's talk about me. The question was, who asked Chief Porter to investigate me? I have documentation that proves that. I think it's retaliatory. I think any actions to remove uh, Chief Porter from his position as our chief is retaliatory and I think it's just infantile. How much more was, must we put up with this retaliatory actions that we see coming from you, sir? It's just been, it's, let's, let's move forward. Let's build this county. Let's bring the citizens together and know that everybody doesn't agree with you. We, we sh we're supposed to disagree. We're not clones. I would like for this board to actually take a look at the complaint that Chief Porter has filed. I've read it. The people of the community need to know it. What are the charges? What are the complaints? As my um, member said before me, he's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. He's accessible. He's accountable. He holds his officers accountable. And we need that. I think we have one of the best police chiefs in the metro area. <laughs> and I'm going to end this with just a question for you, sir. Why is there a need to remove the police chief and put him in a position as a 911 director? And he only has 13 months left on the job. Thank you. Ms. Baldwin, I will say this, though, that in reference to the complaints that was lodged by him, it was investigated by this board through a third party, and all his claims were found to be unfounded, just so you know. Linda Granger. I'm going in a different direction. Um, I ask all to govern accordingly, and I've been in this community a long time, Clay County, Linda Granger, and I advocate for all. Where I come, I have a reason for coming, and I put the people first. And my um, address to the chairman and the vice chairman and the board member to govern accordingly, according, and open government and transparently. One thing um, I she turn up, I'm gonna address you. I've been knowing you a long time. So make the right decision and keep our cheap holder. And I know you will look at all aspects. And you the way I come to you all, I have a good reason because he is accessory to the people. If he do wrong, you know, I'll be the first here to call you all. So uh you just can't make the decision by yourself. I know you had the whole board member as a whole. So I ask you all to come as a whole and keep him in the community and then just continue open government, transparent, and hold your foot to, the, uh, to uh, what you said to the city, what you gonna do. If you have complaint and counsel, then you take action. But try in your heart, y'all look and govern court and keep him in a, a, chief, a policeman. And I also want you all to look at uh, our school system is a Title I school system, the whole school district. So when you look at a district, the whole one and the title one, you got to look at the trash and everything, tax and everything. When your budget look at what the still the money and stuff going into. And I ask you all to look at what y'all have the trash come through, all these people come. Can y'all look into add a fee into your water bill or something that all these trash don't have to come through here and to um, be able to have one little payment that everybody can be uh, able to afford. And I ask you all also to look at surgery the hospital because you got to make the direct from the top to the bottom. So you need to go to the top and make sure that they use the money be good student or the taxpayer money. But we do need that hospital. And we do need to be able to go to uh, the hospital without a fee being shown. Because before you have, I spoke on that before, we don't have the money to be paid for no parking. So a lot of people cannot go see or uh, they family member because they had to pay their pocket fee. And then when they go across the street to CVS and everything, their car can be towed. So I want you all to put a law in play. If the top don't do, it'd be accountability and 
maybe some tan, something, then you know things will be changed. But look at the whole budget for the city of Clay County. But also, Chief Porter, uh, you know, make sure y'all keep him and guarantee y'all be here. If he need to go, I'll be the first one come in this board member say y'all need to get rid of him. But right now, let's keep him. Thank you all. Cynthia Turner. Cynthia Turner. Virginia Hall. Good morning. I'm Virginia Hall. Um, I'm a Clayton County resident. I uh, just want to address Chief Turner and the Board of Commissioners. Uh, and just on behalf of Normandy neighborhood, we're in the north part of Clayton County. And there has been such a tremendous difference in our community as a result of Chief Porter being our chief of police. We're here today to support him and to ask for the board's transparency in what they do and the decisions that are made that's going to affect the citizens of Clayton County. You know, we don't want st decisions to be made and we don't know anything about it. You know, we're kept in the dark. We're paying our taxes and you all the reason that, you know, um, our taxes go toward, you know, paying the salaries of the Board of Commissioners. So we're asking for transparency for anything and everything that goes on in our county. You know, I know there's a uh, possibility of taxes going up. It's okay for taxes to go up, and I'm saying that personally, uh, because if it's going to help, if it's going to improve our county, if it's going to make it better, then, you know, let's, let's take a, a, a small tax increase. But let us know about it. Let us know what it's for. You know, let us in on what's going on. I, I just want to say that we have had such a drastic reduction in crime in our area as a report of the relationship with Chief Porter and his staff working with all of the entities of Clayton County, drug trafficking, gone, prostitution, gone, random shootings in the area that we used to hear, gone. You know, the lottery we don't have like we had before, the break-ins, uh, the robbery, all the crime rate overall is just down. And we just are so proud of that because that was not the case. I could have moved out of the county, but I decided to stay and fight for what is ours because we're there and we're paying for it. So thank you so much for your consideration of thank these you. things. Thank you, ma'am. Rep. Mike Glenn. Okay. Rep. Sandra Scott. Good morning. I'm Sandra G. Scott, Clayton County, Chairman of the Clayton County Delegation. On behalf of the Clayton County Delegation, we submitted a letter of support for Southern Region Medical Center. Clayton County is fortunate to have a quality, low-cost medical facility located in the heart of the county. We are concerned that the, that the closure of Southern Region Medical Center would dramatically impact the county's basic ability to care for our citizens' rising medical needs and will have a devastating financial impact on the county as well as the region. Southern Region opened its doors to patients in April 1971 as a small community hospital and has been faithfully serving our community for five decades. Southern Region has a long history of service and outreach to Clayton County. Its employees live in our county and volunteer hundreds of hours to provide health screenings for citizens. Southern Region will continue to partner with our churches, community centers, and local leaders to help improve our quality of life. In 2014, the hospital delivered over 3,000 babies, performed over 2,700 cardiovascular procedures, 1,013, 19 chemo treatments, and over 13,000 screenings and diagnostic mammograms. Notably, the hospital provide 21 million in free medical care in that year. The delegation believed that Clayton County benefits greatly from these services and that our community will be negatively impacted if these life-changing services disappear. We are confident that the Board of Commissioners will do what is right for our county. We know firsthand that all too often physical visibility is the central <coughs> issue. We write to make sure that you know you have our support 
and that we hope that every possible scenario is being considered to save our hospital and protect the major economic engine. We are fortunate to have a facility that is sought out by not only us locally, but our neighboring citizens. And as the delegation, we're asking that you all keep Southern Region. And also, I am here also as a supporter of Chief Greg Porter. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this concludes the public comment portion. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a motion to go into executive session so we can discuss the most updated information on the hospital and look at those options as to what we need to consider in finalizing the budget. I'll second it. Properly moved and second. Mr. Chairman, does that have to do with potential litigation or real estate? Litigation and real estate. Okay, no. just making sure. Yes, sir. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. We stand in executive session. Okay, motion to reconvene. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. Ms. Thurman. Excuse me. One and two, can we reverse number two first before we do the budget? That would be hard to do because the resolution separating the 911 center is included within the budget itself. That's why. So if the budget is not adopted with that solution in it, then it's a mute point to go to number two. Number two would not be needed. That's fine. Okay. Mr. Chairman, before Ms. Ms. Bivens speaks to the budget, could I ask if somebody could give us an update on the hospital, perhaps our EMA director, Mr. Merkinson? Chief Merkinson is in here. Yes, sir. Take the, mo po the podium, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. So basically where the hospital is at this point, and I want to make sure that, that you have the latest um, updated information. As a result of the Deloitte study um, that this board approved and brought Deloitte in to, to seek interested third-party investors um, and help the hospital with that search, um, Deloitte uncovered four potential um, people that were interested in the hospital. Um, three of those individuals have subsequently dropped out of the, of the running, and we still have one party who is interested in coming in and looking at the facility. Um, despite our best efforts to get them here prior to this meeting, they were unable to make travel arrangements and get here prior till noon tomorrow. Um, so at this point, um, kind of where the hospital is, is there is still one potential viable candidate. Um, their name is Prime Healthcare. Um, they specialized in coming in and helping distressed assets um, with hospitals and other businesses and making attempts to turn them around. Um, they've been given financial information about the condition of the medical center and they will come for their tour tomorrow. Um, we fully expect them um, in their four hour visit here, roughly four hour visit, they'll be here from around noon till four tomorrow. Um, we hope that they will be able to give the hospital board a direction, um, tentative direction, either thumbs up or thumbs down, hopefully by close of business tomorrow. Worst case, first thing Wednesday morning. So. At this point, kind of where the Board of Directors is for the hospital is um, we're asking this commission to consider um, some additional funding to help us bridge the gap till we give Prime Healthcare enough time to do a thorough assessment of the hospital and then come back with whether or not they, um, they seek to move forward with a potential buyout plan of the hospital or whatever their plan may be. We just, we simply won't know that answer until sometime late tomorrow evening. Okay. Mr. Chairman, any questions? Yes. A follow-up question. The estimated additional support that the Board of Commissioners could consider giving to the hospital for this short bridge period of time to continue what they're doing, is there a number for indigent care and drugs and things that we could be giving them that would work? Yes, sir. To basically buy us some time to give prom to do what they, what they need to do is estimated at right around 750000 Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you, chief. Yes, sir. Ms. Bivens. Good morning, chairman and commissioners. 
I have um, proposed um, amendments to the, to the original 2016 recommended budget, and I will read the amendments. They are as follows. It's to increase other general government in the amount of $2,250,000 to increase general assistance expense to Southern Regional Medical Center in the amount of $750,000, to add funds for an E911 direct in the amount of $154,292, to add funding for landscaping and beautification cost in the amount of $100,000, eliminate the longevity increase of $1,273,852, to increase the frozen unfilled positions uh, by $185,000, Decrease operating transfers out in the amount of $1,594,713 and to decrease contract service fees by $200,000. If you recall, the recommended proposed general fund budget was um, $182,246,348 in the proposed, with the amendments, the adopted 2016 general fund budget would be the same amount. Okay, are there any questions for Ms. I have Bivens? a question. When you say, Ms. Bivens, when you say same amount, you're talking about no millage rate increase? That is correct. There's no proposed millage rate increase for any year all. Other, than okay. the, other than the difference in the loss credit that we've Right, talked about. but our gross millage rate stays gross exactly rate the same. remains the same. That is correct. I, I have a question, too. Mm -hmm. um, what is this ad landscaping and beautification cause? Where is this going to this landscaping is going to take place, or what is it? It's at various um, roads in the county. I know Tower Boulevard was one that was um, recommended by the chairman um, to the, the landscaping there in the middle and the medians, and 138, and I, was it another one? I can't remember. Well, which. basically anywhere else that's Anywhere needed. else in the, we'll the county-wide. It's for not just that, the one uh, that's county-wide. The, county. the one thing that citizens have consistently asked for is beautification efforts. And this $100,000 fund will help us. My, my next concern is, okay, I, I just don't see the urgency. Um, during the past administration, which I was a part of, we, came, we, we also proposed to combine the city's 911 centers. I, not a bad idea. I just, right now, I don't see the urgency of this and adding this E911 director at a cost of $154,000 plus, and then you talk about going ahead and then another, uh, if, if as the original um, posting came out saying to transfer the police chief to that position, then we fund another police, you know, chief. I mean, it's, to me, it's just a constant waste of taxpayer money. Any other questions? Uh, well, I have a comment. Okay. With this budget, I cannot support it if we keep the 911 director position in at 150 $4,292, nor this landscaping beautification. With um, where we are now, we do not need to spend $100,000 on beautification. What we need to start doing is picking up our paper and all and cleaning up. Right now, maybe in the future, we can do that. But right now, since we are at a budget crunch trying to save the hospital and all, I think we should take those two line items out adding the 911 director and added landscaping, which would total out, um, gosh. Oh, and, and another point too. We have I mean $200,000, and I believe it's in the human resources uh, budget that was something put in. For promotional testing. For promotional testing, testing, yes. We need to take that out. And if we take that out, take the um, 911 director position, the $100,000 for the landscaping beautification, that will give us a little over a million dollars. And that will help. Wait, two plus one plus 1.54 one. is a million? That's not a million. Less than 500,000. No, no, no. Uh, well, okay, I was considering the fund balance, not taking money from the fund balance. But the uh, Which was seven, seven hundred, seven hundred fifty-eight thousand or whatever, but let's subtract that. Don't well, subtract that. But um, we're not using any money out of fund balance oh, to balance the budget. Okay, okay, for now, taking away the 154 for the E91 director mm -hmm. position, 100,000 for landscaping beautification, 200,000 for the testing and all, 
what was that called again uh, that I talked with the chief about testing. that we yes that we do not need well let me say this that and promotional that testings for the police and fire department there is currently no test in place so therefore they have to pay for do it what out of pocket call, call TAD temporary assigned duties they need to have a promotional they uh, can system. have that later but f since we have a budget crunch here trying to save the hospital I think that can be put off for another budget time. But I'm adding up the 254, the 200,000 for that testing, and 100,000 for the beautification um, that we can use for that uh, addition for the uh, hospital health care. Commissioner Rooks. Okay. My constituent, since we go down Terra Boulevard, complain about what it looks like, the eyesore. And I've gotten a number of people who ask, why aren't we doing more? We get the um, prisoners out there to pick up trash as much as possible. We have people who tell us that Terra Boulevard is the main artery throughout the county. And why aren't we making it look better than what it is. People are always complaining about what we look like attracts what we get. So why aren't we willing to put the money into making our community look better? So we have enough money to assist Southern Regional. $100,000, I've seen us waste more money than $100,000 to make our community look better. So I don't, I'm just concerned about that. And then to not want to pay for testing for our employees, where will they get the money to do the testing if they need to protect the community? Where are we getting that money for them? Are they paying for it out of their pockets? What's the system now? I'm not sure. Is Ms. Bright here? So it's in HR, so it's for our employees. It's, it's for the promotional testing of public safety, which is um, the police and the fire. This has not been budgeted in several years, so it's up to the, uh, the individual departments to find the money in their current budget for the testing or to do the, uh, the TAD, which is the Temporary Assignment of Duties. And, and, and so there is no standardized testing okay. for these promotions. So we are already being chastised for not paying our officers and public safety officials more, but then we want them to test and we don't pay for it. Correct. Okay. So, okay. so, so are you, Chief Murkison, Chief Porter, are, are the guys now paying to be promoted to their other positions? Is, is that what you're saying, Ms. Cooper? Nellie. She's asking it the question. Is, it, so I'm, I'm, let's let the chief's answer. Well, so currently we have a, a system that we vetted through, a, through, a, through the legal department that didn't cost us one dime, and, and we sense that that process has been exhausted. Now, we, look, we did some studies, and, and uh, we, we came up with approximately $35,000 uh, on the police part to test the sergeants and lieutenants uh, per the request of the police chief. Uh, I can use that other $70,000 for other things, body cameras and, and, and RMS systems and, and other things to fight crime with. $35,000, in my opinion, would be suffice enough. And, and again, we uh, haven't had any uh, problems with the current process, uh, testing model that we have in place now. Thank you. Chief Marcus? Uh, yes, ma'am. So the fire department, much like the police department, used to have competitive testing pretty much at all rank levels. Um, once the competitive testing was done away with, I know just from the fire department standpoint, we've created a rather lengthy list of prerequisites that our employees are required to go through, um, which includes some testing, um, but it's more scenario-based, incident command-based, um, and it's broken up into three different categories. We have fire officer one, two, and three, depending on which rank structure that you're going through. So we, we kind of came up with that scenario as a way to still test the competency of our, of our folk, but you know, we, we do kind of shoulder the, the expense of putting those classes on the instructor time and whatever the case may be. But like Chief Porter did, you know, we kind of went through, vetted our process through legal and say, okay, does this get us a, a standardized process for promotional testing competencies of officers um, that will satisfy both our legal obligations and the state requirements? So that's, that's kind of the system we function under now. So I think the chief, and don't, don't let me speak for you, we were looking at maybe going back to a competitive testing for sergeant and lieutenant and then leaving the administrative position still 
appointed much like they are now with a list of prerequisites. So, you know, it's it, like public safety does, we'll, we'll come up with a system that molds to, to what we have to work with. But, you know, I think the preference would be a, a, some sort of standardized competitive test, but we can certainly make what we have now work as well. So the competitive testing costs more, is that what you're? Yes, ma'am, because basically what you're doing is you're asking a company to come in who's, you know, you're not using county employees for assessors. Um, the tests are nationally validated against standards from across the country. Um, they do take into account operations here because obviously my folk operate a little different than they do out in the Midwest and on the West Coast. So they take that into account and then they offer a written examination. Um, then after the written examination, there's an assessment center, um, which you'll have to perform a couple job related tasks. I think they all job. carry administrative functions, but then I have an incident command portion to mine where Chief Porter may have some tactical or operational exercises that his folk have to do. So it's, it's really you're taking the county out of it altogether. You're removing myself and Chief Porter from the promotional process, you know, okay. process altogether. Mm -hmm. You're letting a third party company come in and evaluate your officers. Okay. Um, and that's what makes it more I, competitive. I, but more hold, hold on, excuse me. I still want to say, um, as Commissioner Hambrick voiced earlier, you know, some of some of these things on, you know, this amendment, I, I just don't see the the urgency of doing these things right now. Uh, let me go back. A few weeks ago, I hosted our Hope for Homeowners um, workshop, and it was just amazing that people came in from 10 to 2, continually coming, and that let me know that people are struggling to pay their mortgages and so forth. And so when we're continuing to just waste taxpayers money like this it, I, I mean I just don't see the need of it I'm suspect about this landscaping and beautification thing we've got um, our refuse control out here and, and we got uh, two state reps here what three state reps can you know can't we talk to GDOT and and our GDOT rep let's see if we can get them down here on highway 42 Terra Boulevard you know and and the Lakes Five Parkway a little bit more often. I just think this this is just a waste, and this is just a continual pattern. And don't let me mention that over half million dollars that was spent out of reserve to investigate other commissioners, one of them me being included. And I just think we just we've developed a continual pattern of wasting taxpayers' money. What commissioner was investigated? That must have been Ford's uh, administration. Must, but what? No, that was this administration. That was this administration, administration that, that did over that in 2013. Half dollars. Well, no, it, no. For the record, no commissioners were investigated, to my knowledge. We did a forensic audit. Of the um, finance department. So that if they were investigated, about. then. And again, you know, when we the citizens came up here early and spoke, and they asked for transparency. And again, we're not being transparent with that, and we know what that was about. Okay. Okay, we uh -huh. are we're not splitting oh, back for the question. Back to the budget and all the hundred thousand dollars and the two hundred thousand being spent. And I noticed on, in this budget we are taking money from the alternative dispute um, uh, victims assistance. We can be using that money to put back into those things that are very valuable to the citizens of Clayton Where County. Into the process. To, where are you referring? Uh, 260 alternative dispute, 265 victims assistance. And those have been some good programs. Commissioner alternative dispute, $2,313. Commissioners, that is a special right? revenue fund that does not fall on the general operating fund. I'm, I'm but, just saying, but instead those, of spending $100,000 in landscaping and beautification, instead of spending $200,000 on something, and $150,000 on the E911 director, we can be doing other things with that money. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Again, the 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 grant the fund that you were referencing that is a grant, and that that is dictated by the grantor how much money we get. So apparently it, it, that they decreased the funding, so we had to decrease the expenditures accordingly. That's why you see that there. And let me just make this last comment about the uh, promotional testing, and I'm a little confused by Chief Porter's comment because I could have swore just a couple of a month or so ago. He and I and Chief Stanford had a meeting where he asked to have the captain's position still. You did not ask for the captains to be considered with the deputy chiefs and the majors, and not, and then the yes. other two go Th through the competitive process. It, we already, the chairman, we already have a process in place for for every rank. What I asked was to test the lieutenants and sergeants. I told you that the captains and above need to be 
on board with the police chief's philosophies and ideologies and ideologies and overall uh, scheme of things based on the community outcry and, uh, and, and things. And, those and what was my response to you, sir? You said you, you were on board and <coughs> removed. said I was on board to and remove I the agreed with you the to cap- have the promotional uh, testing for lieutenants and sergeants, correct? Yes, but it doesn't take the, the information that we, uh, uh, our study revealed that it only took about $35,000. The company that we were looking at does the testing for Georgia State Patrol, GBI, and some other surrounding metro areas who are competitive and have the same challenges and the same things that we're dealing with. So I was just saying, you know, $70,000, we can use that. Use but that. that money was in somebody else's budget, not yours. But you wanted to move that money from HR's budget into your budget for your department's use. And where I tried to explain to you that it's more than just the police department because fire department was also included in that. But in I other words, we don't need two hundred thousand dollars to do that for a good okay. promotional testing system. You do. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I have just an operational question. Should we, because uh, there's a, a lively debate, should we make a motion and approve, and then just dis- and second yes. that, and yes. then continue the discussion and make okay. amendments or not yes. accordingly? Yes, sir. If that's you are correct. You are. I'd correct. like to make a motion that we consider approval of the proposed budget. And I'll suck in it, probably moved in second. Are there any other questions or discussion? Does that include the $154,000 for the E911 director's position, $100,000 for the beautification, and $200,000 that's not needed for a promotional testing at this time? Yes, it does. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Hey. So it's three to two. Commissioners Hambrick and Gregory opposed. Thank you. You could have asked to reduce it. You only need that before the 50 or whatever. I would have supported that. Can you support it if you want? That wasn't the purpose. Mr. Chairman, if I may, Georgia law requires that the budget be adopted by a resolution or by an ordinance. So just for the record, resolution number 2015-167 is a resolution providing for the adoption of the county's budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2016, to provide for the appropriation of expenditures and recognition of anticipated funding sources, to provide for the circumstances under which the budget may be amended by the Board of Commissioners, the Chairman, or the Chairman's designee, to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably move to second. Any questions? I do. I do. Were you, Commissioner Hamburg, were you willing to reduce their training or you're trying to eliminate? Oh, no, I'm I'm trying to eliminate the 911 position. I'm talking about the training. The training could be reduced to what uh, Chief Porter was asking, no more than 70,000. Was that correct or was that 35,000? Thirty-five thousand for an independent person to come do testing. First. No, on his half. Instead of a hundred for him and a hundred for him, he's going to get a hundred and he's going to get thirty-five. So we're going to reduce it by sixty-five thousand. Let's leave that in general fund. Okay. Why would you? Well, yeah, he so says that's what your request was. That's not. No, it's, it's not. not. No, my request was to remove it. My request was to remove it altogether. He wants thirty-five thousand for testing. Well, that's because Commissioner Rooks asked the question, was I willing to reduce it? No, Chief uh, Porter so stated earlier it cost 35000 Under the current system, it does not cost the county any money. Okay, well, that's, that's the system, that's the system we're, we're I like. At the, we're at the crossroads now uh, because of the uh, uh, civil service that we have to revisit it every 24 months, and it's, we're at that point. So uh, I think the, the chairman uh, spoke with the personnel director uh, about funding uh, a promotional test. Uh, for the police and fire. Now, granted, we do need uh, promotional tests put in place because I'm currently tatting uh, police officers. However, under the current system, it does not cost one dime to do it. Again, that system was vetted through uh, the, the through a legal department, through the civil service, and the board approved it. Okay, so let's take the 200 and your half, cut it down to zero, and leave his, and I'll support that. Is that what you're asking? No. Okay. It sounds well, like Chief Markerson says he needs $100,000 to run his promotion. To have and, a competitive and Chief process. Chief Porter is saying he doesn't need any. 
No, All I right. don't know what the cost is. I haven't I haven't spoken with the HR director about about who she's oh, advertising okay. or anything like that. So those Were you so you all are not involved in this, this two hundred thousand dollars? Okay. Cost, I mean the, the, the let, let me say this. Price, if, so if we don't so use it, we can just slap that HR director. Anyways, excuse me. The HR know. director made the recommendation of two hundred thousand. She researched the competitive process and how much it would cost to conduct competitive. Um, testing, process. testing process between these two departments, and that's how she arrived. But why would you do it without the professionals? You know, why would you do that? Why, why didn't you? Testing. When it comes, the way the process works, Commissioner Hambrick, is once a third party or a party has been, has been selected to conduct the testing, they get with the chiefs of each respective department, and then they come up with a testing system that is uh, related to the duties of their individual departments, whether it's police, what, and make it more realistic to the county that they serve in. I cannot see a human resources person doing that without the professional advice and input from our chiefs. So if we move the, if we just remove the two hundred altogether, it goes back to general fund. If y'all want to get together and bring it back at some later date after they've all talked. And then they won't have a promotional system. And that's the fine. They, will won't have have to, they can do TADS. We will remove well, it. Well, that's not really fair to the men and women serving well, each well, department. Well, you have their chiefs saying, I don't, don't need it. This one chief doesn't it. want it at all, and the other chief wasn't consulted in the cost in the first place. So we'll take it out. I'm no, no. What, what, I want, what I need is some body cameras. Uh, from my, my yeah, that's completely different. We're budget, talking, that's, yeah. not a, that's not a budget <laughs> request. <laughs> we'll all right, so is there a uh, motion to amend I mean, taking that out or what? You want to? You, would you want to remove it? And there? also remove Complete. the E nine one one director. Well, I'll make a motion to the motion to remove the two hundred thousand dollar line item for the testing. I will second it. Probably moved and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. I just did that for you. You can do. It. You can take out everything. I I ask that you take out. The two hundred thousand, and I ask that you all. take out we the one fifty four. Those other two items need to come out too. Exactly. Okay, so oh we'll bring those out. Then make a motion. Okay, that last motion just passed, uh, Commissioner Gregory. I didn't hear. It. Were you opposed to that as well? We want them all out. Okay, so it was She's three to two. Well, there's only one ahead of it. It passed. Oh, Mr. Chairman, just for clarity, so we, the, the the motion that was initially on the table was to adopt the budget that was presented by the CFO. And then Commissioner Edmondson amended his motion to remove the 200,000 for the- Testing out of test. the HR department. Okay, and so that motion to remove the $200,000 was approved three to two. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And we already got a first and a, a second on the uh, original adoption of the budget. Yes, Mr. Chairman. No, that just, was just for clarification, a when I remove the two hundred thousand dollars, where will I be moving that two hundred thousand? dollars Just somewhere in the general. general I put it in other general government then. We'll increase right. it by two hundred thousand dollars. All right. So now we're back to the resolution providing for the adoption of the budget. Right. Okay. And we already got a I first. I think you have a second. motion and a second. Yes, sir. So, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. Nay. Three, two, three, two passes. Mr. Chairman, next is resolution number 2015-168, which is a resolution to create the 911 Communications Center Department, to create the position of director of the 911 Communications Center Department, to adopt a job description for the position, to appoint a director of the 911 Communications Center Department, to authorize the chairman to perform any acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, <clears throat> to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget as needed to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, to authorize an effective date of this resolution, and for other purposes. All right, I'm gonna make the motion for Greg Porter, Chief Greg Porter, to be moved to the do become the director of the 911 communication center. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, is we that? We have to do the resolution. We need to do the resolution first. I thought it was a resolution. No, it's, it's not. There is no. Go ahead, then. Pr proceed on. Okay, so that, that was the resolution, 168. That was the resolution, correct? 
Yes, to create the department, to create the position here. of the director, okay. 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 to okay. adopt Seven. a job description, okay. and to appoint a director. Okay, That's so the creation of the director's position for 911 communications is the resolution. I'll make the motions there a second. And that includes the job description. And the job description. That's correct. Is there a second on that? Is there a second? All right. We're hearing oh. none. Hmm? I'll make a second. All right. Probably moved in a second. Are there any questions, statements? I do. You know, once again, I, I don't see any urgency in this right now. It's, um, I, I keep emphasizing, you know, what the people have said when they came up here. We need transparency. You, you guys know what this is about. And so we need to just stop and, and think about um, the taxpayers' money and, you know, this $154,000. And as I said, I mean, people are working hard. And, and probably if you all had come over to the Rock Baptist Church a few weeks ago, you will see how desperate people are to try to um, restructure their mortgages and just to be able to pay them. Uh, you know, I hear from these people. I get the calls. And, and, and when we can just sit up here and just be so frivolous with the taxpayer money, this is just not right. Well, I get the calls also. Commissioner, so I understand where you, what you're saying. Most I definitely. would like to say that we have a police chief that the county is very proud of. I'm Eric. proud of. Eric. He has worked very diligently in the community. He attends all the functions, a lot of times not even invited. He has been a police chief of the people. Exactly. We have not had this, not, and I've been in this county since the 80s. And this, is, this police chief really exemplifies the commitment at all to this community. I mean, he, he's really, um, it's genuine. It's not a coming out just to be coming out. This man is genuine. And then here we are talking about moving him to a 911 center that we don't need anyway. We don't need 911 is already under the police, and that's where it needs to stay. And Chief Porter needs to stay as the police chief. You, you know, I want to add to that, too. You know, under, under Chief Porter, the, you know, his community-oriented policing, and someone spoke about this earlier, you know, you all just don't know how that has helped the citizens in the county. Even, you know, commissioners, you know, I, I laugh sometimes. Y'all know my husband's a police officer, and I laugh sometimes because when people call, he said, what do they want you to do? And, uh, but people call us you know, about things. And the way he has structured this, we have a go-to, that the people are heard, the people in the community. These officers aren't just riding by and ignoring it. People have got somebody they can go to, just the way he has this structured. And I have not heard anything bad about the way he has this set up. Homeowner, homeowner presidents and everybody, they can go to that captain, they can talk to that captain, they build rapport with um, the the officers who are working in that district, I can tell you about community meetings where at, after the meetings where the homeowners just roll out the spreads for the officers because they appreciate what they're doing in the community. And so why do we want to change that when we have a police chief who's doing that? Well, I will add that I agree that it, community oriented policing has made a, a difference in it started out in 2006, so I'm very familiar with the difference that it has made. Uh, any other questions? All right, hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Three to two. It passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did I have to do that today? Which was it? It's not in there. You can't do it. It's not in there. Nothing, because it's not in a resolution. Is that all the business? I can't.
Miss Miss Barnes, I just wrote a record that that resolution all it did was just create a, that yeah. position. That's correct. And, and again, I'm asking here before the people now transparency, guys. As we move forward and we've got our police chief here, let's don't try to do any kind of little underhanded stuff. That's not right. What are you asking, Commissioner? I'm sorry. What are you asking? She asked a question. What was your question? I don't know. I asked that, we, you know, this position is created. I asked that, you, you know, that we as a board not try to do anything underhanded. A board that's always talking about some transparency. Let's do what's right by the people. This is we wrong. are doing what's right. What are you referring so. to? Wrong. The creation of the, what are, you, what are you referring to specifically? Okay. The cre we created the position, okay? Is there another? Yes, ma'am. The resolution was to create the position of director. Uh, you adopted a job description, and the resolution authorizes the, um, the appointment of a director of the center, of the department. And how would that director be chosen, name? The, the board would make that decision. Any other questions? Okay. All right, well, it's gonna be at the board's decision. And Mr. I Chairman, I'm, under, I'm a little unclear as to this constant banter about the lack of transparency. I'm not exactly sure what's being referenced. Can you all explain that to I me? Can, I, I mean, here we have, we've been talking for months about a possibility of an expanded oh, not reorganization for EMA system that's going to be having multiple tiers of care to address, triage, manage health care, depending on where the county goes with this hospital over the next few days, weeks, months, and years. Giant reorganization that's going to start through 911. We've been solicited by at least one this municipal city. Last the city. Was the first minute, time I heard wait, about wait, the 911. Let them go finish. Very, we've been already solicited by at least one city within our county to take over their 911 operations for efficiencies. So we're talking about an expanding and possibly reorganization of 911 in the county. As I understand it, it was a standalone department before I became a commissioner and you became a commissioner. So there's a legitimate, transparent rationale as to why it makes good business and common sense to have a separate 911 from PD because all these p possible changes are going to have nothing to do with PD. That makes a lot of sense to me, and I don't understand what these accusations of lack of transparency and, and the, are in the first place. So if you could explain that to me. Commissioner Edmondson, and I, I think I mentioned in the beginning that during the previous administration, we also suggested, you know, this um, combined 911 system. But, of course, during that time, you know, it was seen as some kind of corruption. And so what we're saying now, I, you know, I'm not opposed to the 911 system, even though I don't see it as something urgent. What I am opposed to is how you're trying to fill this position to take a man out of his 29-year law enforcement career and put him in a civilian position. And why did you just vote against the creation of it? This isn't urgent. This is our annual budget that's been postponed twice. There's nothing urgent about this morning. So I why did you vote against it? You just said you, you, were, you could be okay with it. Because I, I know what's next. Because I know what's next with this 3-2, and you're not being transparent with it. About what? We have an, a hospital issue that we've been advised that we can discuss next week. And when it becomes apparent the issues we're facing, you'll understand why the 911 system was created. And we've discussed that. Again, and, and it's being portrayed that this is some type of a punishment or something for yeah. him. <laughs> and, and which that's it is. exactly for what it is. And it is. It it's is retaliation. Not a yes, it is. This for man what? possesses is the right. knowledge. Hold on well, a second. Not you even, your time. Let me just, All right, quiet. All right. We've not even gotten to that point. We're talking about the 911 system. And if there's a motion for that, then fine. If not, we'll take it up next week. Now. This man was, has ran the 911 center. He was been in charge of the 911 center. That. We went through oh. a special local option sales tax to ex, uh, build a $60 million interoperability system that was integrated in our system. He has 
intimate knowledge of how to operate that. He said his time is winding down. Why not use him for the benefit and, and for his knowledge in that department? Because that will, he will no longer be a police officer. Why he would will he not no have, why would he, no he would not have uh, the right to carry a gun or make arrests. He would not have arrest powers. He will not be a police chief. And I want this man to be, remain the police chief. And but he's not. Let me, let me explain something to you. Now he's retiring. He's told me himself last week he's retiring in the next 12 or 13 months, less than that when he had a vacation day. So he's not going to be our police chief. And he needs to retire time. as the police chief. Exactly. Thank, right, you. Yeah, Thank you. All right. Well, at this time, unless there's an, any other statement from either one of you. Then I'm going to make a motion to transfer Chief Porter to 911 Center. No loss of pay, no status change other than director, uh, to be effective when the budget comes effective. Is there a second on it? Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. Properly moved and second. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. Three to two, it passes. Is there any other business for the board? All right. I Eric. do. Um, in the midst of all this, I, 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 I still have to say this, that this was just wrong. But in the midst of all this wrongness and so forth that's going on, I think it's very important that we recognize, uh, Keith, that we lost an employee on last week um, and so forth, and we just... I know Reverend Glanton didn't know that when you had the moment of silence, but I think it's important that we do just recognize that we did lose an employee. Yeah, and that was uh, Mr. Watson, so please keep him, his family in prayers, please. Brian Watson. Brian. Brian. Brian Watson. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. Properly moved and second. Those are the aye. Aye. Opposed? Have a good day. It's unanimous.